you know how to back into a stall? Or do you know what skills on hills are important? Let's think for a moment about these things. Because actually, these are two important skills in driving the car. Why do we need to know how to back into a stall? In fact, what is a stall? And what is backing into a stall? We need to know how to back into a stall because we're going to need to use this skill in our driving career. We'll need to use it, for instance, in backing into a garage someday. And you may find that it's necessary for you to back into your garage at home because it's easier to leave, remember? It's better to pull into traffic forward than to back in the traffic. So to avoid backing into traffic, you may need to back into your garage. Or you may be in a parking lot, perhaps out in a shopping area, and need to back into a stall. Not only that, but backing into a stall develops good skills of judging the position of fenders. So backing into a stall is a good practice skill, a good practice lesson. How do you do it? First, drive past the stall. Your rear bumper should be six to eight feet past the stall. Before you stop, signal. In fact, signal well in advance. Then ease back slowly, turning the wheels sharply to the right. As the car goes into the stall, and you must judge again, both that rear right and rear left fender, straighten the wheel. Let the car move slowly back until the rear wheels rest gently against the curb. I want to show you how this looks when the maneuver is actually being accomplished. Remember the car first goes past the stall. Signal is made well in advance. Check your positioning on the stall and stop the car. Now, place the car in reverse, of course, back slowly and turn the wheel rapidly. And you notice the hand-over-hand -hand method of turning the wheel. Keep checking both rear fenders. As you enter the stall, straighten the wheels. Let the car go back slowly until the rear wheels rest against the curb. Leaving the stall, although a simple maneuver, is still always a dangerous maneuver because it means you must come out into the stream of traffic. So first, check that traffic. When clear, pull straight out until the right side of your automobile will clear all obstacles. Now you do this pull-out maneuver, at least the beginning of it, with the wheel straight. Then turn hard to the right when you're sure you can clear on the right side. Now we'll get into the car and see how this maneuver looks in practice. Check traffic, both directions. Move straight ahead without turning. Then when you're sure the right side will clear, make a sharp turn to the right and continue in the traffic stream. Let's consider now the skills on hills. These are important skills. Many people have the mistaken idea that since they live in a rather flat area, they do not need to be concerned about driving on hills and having skills and maneuvering the car on hills. This is a mistaken idea because in today's mobile population, people move all over the country, drive all over the country. As a result, you may very well be driving on hills even though you do not live in the immediate area of hills. In practicing on hills, of course, we must first learn to stop on an upgrade. This is, again, a rather simple maneuver, yet an important one. First, as always, signal your intention to stop. Then stop smoothly near the right curb. And remember, the force of gravity is helping stop the car. Therefore, not nearly as much pressure is needed on the brake pedal to make this kind of a stop. Now let's think about starting an upgrade. What skills are important in starting on an upgrade? Well, we must be able to make a smooth start. And we must be able to make that start without rolling backward into the car behind. At the same time, without abusing our automobile. 
proper use of the car, in other words. On a mild upgrade, this is not a great problem. It simply means that when traffic is cleared and it's time to move, we make a very sudden move with our right foot from the brake to the accelerator and press smoothly on the accelerator. Let's go into traffic in the car and watch the practice of this maneuver. Traffic is cleared. The foot moves very rapidly to the accelerator, presses gently on the accelerator, a check of traffic with the signal, and if you have shifted to the low position, you shift, of course, back to drive. But how about the steep upgrade? This is, presents the problem for most drivers, especially when they're just learning to drive. Well, of course, when we have stopped on the steep upgrade, we have to think a little more about the skill of starting smoothly here. So we apply the handbrake rather than using the foot brake and shift to the low range definitely here. Check traffic. Push gently on the accelerator. This is with the parking brake on. We have applied the handbrake. As we feel the engine begin to strain against that handbrake, release the handbrake. That means the car will then move forward and not roll backward. And as we gain momentum, of course, move the selector to drive. I want you to see again how this maneuver looks in the automobile. Check traffic. Signal the stop. Apply the handbrake. Move the right foot over to the accelerator. As the car begins to move, release the handbrake. Of course, again, check your traffic and move into the flow of traffic, shifting to the drive position as you gain momentum. There's another method for starting on a steep upgrade for the automobile with the automatic transmission. This is method is by using both feet rather than the handbrake. That is, the left foot on the foot brake, the right foot on the accelerator. The procedure is very much the same from there. Press on the accelerator until the car begins to strain to move forward. Then release the pressure with your left foot, thus releasing the brake, and the car will move forward. Now we know how to maneuver the car. We, of course, need to go out and practice these skills. But there are other skills that you must know on the hill. Skills of parking the car. This is really more knowledge than skill, but it is very, very important. Many, many drivers every year fail to park correctly and very often park illegally, and the car gets away on the hill, driverless, and causes an accident. Here's our small car that we can use again to demonstrate proper methods for parking on a hill. First, the upgrade. Of course, signal and stop near the curb. Then move the car slowly forward and turn the wheel sharply away from the curb, that is to the left, under normal circumstances. Stop the car and the right front wheel here should be about one foot from the curb. Release the brake lightly so that the car rolls slowly backward until the right front wheel touches the curb, thus holding the car. Then, of course, stop the engine. Now let's see how this looks in the practice maneuver. Be sure to signal well in advance. Move the car to the right side near the curb. Pull slowly forward and turn the wheel sharply to the left. Then allow the car to roll back until the tire touches the curb. And don't forget, this is in addition to using the parking brake and the parking gear. Now parking downhill. Let's bring our small model car here to the downhill grade. What precautions do we need to take in parking downhill? Well, of course, again, in practicing and in practice, signal and stop near the curb. 
Roll slowly forward and turn the wheel sharply to the right until the right front wheel touches the curb. Thus, holding the car on the hill. Then go through the procedure for stopping the engine. Now, let's take a look at a film of this practice maneuver. As always, signal well in advance. Move the car to the right side near the curb and come to a complete stop. Then allow the car to roll slowly forward and turn the wheel sharply to the right until the right front tire touches the curb. And use this maneuver when there is not a curb for parking either uphill or downhill. After you have turned the wheels into the curb, of course, stop the engine. This is just as much, as much a part of driving as actually maneuvering the automobile. And safety is equally an important factor here. Now, you will automatically build safety into your skills if you will follow these safeguards. On hills, remember, three things keep the car from rolling away after you have left it. In. First, by turning the wheels into the curb the proper direction. The car will be held by the wheels, actually, resting against the curb. Second, using the parking brake, putting on the parking brake firmly. And the third skill, using the gears to hold the car. And that would mean either the parking gear or, in some cars, reverse gear. If you practice these three skills and use them, you will not need to worry about your car rolling away and causing one of these driverless accidents. Now, how do you acquire these skills? Well, actually, you acquire them by developing them into habits so that you automatically do these things whenever you park on a hill. And you develop habits by practicing. Even though this is not a difficult skill in terms of maneuvering the car. Go out and practice so that it becomes a habit, and you will then be a safe driver on hills. This is National Educational Television.